I don't get the fight to to see who can be the most negative and the most hateful. Well, Melissa, I, I don't hate you as a person, but you have to admit, you made a terrible movie. Ghostbusters is back, baby. It's coming. Ghostbusters Afterlife will be coming out in November. I actually have some friends who already got to see it, and they said it's pretty darn good. So I have high hopes for this. But as we are talking about, of course, the newest installment in this Ghostbusters franchise, we have to also talk about the last installment in this Ghostbusters franchise, uh, the 2016 Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Answer the caller as we will forever know it. Uh, the one with the women. The Lady Ghostbusters wasn't very good. Not a good movie. Not a great movie. And you would hope that the people who starred in that movie, you know, the cast and crew, have kind of come to terms with the fact that people didn't really like it. It wasn't that great. It wasn't that funny. You know, and could maybe have a lighthearted, like, okay, we screwed it up. Sorry about that, fans. And we hope you guys get to enjoy the new one. But it seems like they're still a little salty. Seems like they still <laughs> think that we were unnecessarily mean to this movie. To the point where, what are they calling us? Man boys. We're man boys. Of course we are. Well, my fellow man boys, we're going to get into this. But real quick, I want to talk about my sponsor, Hero Wars. Hero Wars is an online role-playing action game with both PvP and PvE modes. You know, you'll love it. You're going to fight against powerful bosses, experience this epic story. It's a ton of fun. And it feels like one of those classic RPG fantasy games that we know and love. Doing missions, collecting loot, upgrading your champions. It's all here. And what's cool about this game, I don't know if you like collecting characters. I do. And here you got more than 50 different heroes. They're all unique. Tons of fun to collect. They've all got unique abilities. You're going to mix and match them, make your own team, figure out the most powerful combination. But the real fun starts once you go online you're going to be making a guild you're going to be fighting against other players you're going to be trying to raise your rank there's just a ton of content in this game it's going to keep you busy for hours days maybe the rest of your life i don't know all i know is i want you to join the game now you're going to get a super chest that's got a secret hero inside you're also going to get 62 emeralds 30,000 gold they're just giving it away hero wars is available on mobile devices but it also runs in a web browser however you want to play just scan this qr code or Use the link in the description, and I'm going to see you inside the game. Hero Wars, baby. Check it out, and let's get into the story. Now, maybe this will sound crazy, but I actually had not watched the 2016 Ghostbusters until last year, because everybody told me it was so bad. And I went to it, and I'm like, is it really that bad? And uh, yeah, it is. It's really that bad. I don't know if you guys remember that when they first put out the Ghostbusters, this was the first trailer they put out, I believe. It was one of the most disliked movie trailers in, in, in the history of YouTube. One million downvotes. Now, was that fair because it was just a trailer? We didn't know it was going to be bad. The problem is we watched the trailer and we're like, I don't know. It doesn't look funny. There's, there's no jokes in the trailer. And if there's no jokes in the trailer, we kind of know we're in trouble. Okay. And then the movie actually came out. I have to tell you, yeah, again, this classic joke of, Look, I'm wearing a, a funny wig. Oh my god. Uh, and all the all the comedy is improv comedy. It's not done well. Like you really gotta write some jokes, guys. If you're gonna make a movie like Ghostbusters, yeah, you should improv some stuff. You should come up with some stuff on the fly. But mostly you gotta write it down. I, I and I went in, I tried to have an open mind. I wrote down every time I laughed. I, there was three jokes I liked. And I think, and honestly, I have bad taste in comedy, so I probably liked more jokes than more people would. So anyway, of course, the star of this movie, or one of the stars, was the great Melissa McCarthy, who I have talked about in other videos. You can go watch my video on her movie, uh, Thunder Force. That was a complete nightmare. Uh, I actually recommend watching this review, because uh, Melissa McCarthy's little scam she's been running with her husband, where... He, he directs all our movies, and they make millions of dollars on these movies. They get like 17% on Rotten Tomatoes, 21%. They got a good scam going. I wish I had this kind of scam. But uh, her new movie, I'm going to be real, it doesn't sound like a, like a scam. It does, I don't, it's not directed by her stupid husband, right? The Starling. She's got a new movie coming out, and it's a drama. Now, it's not getting a great rating on IMDb. But it is a Netflix... Oh, God, never mind. I guess it's trash. <laughs> I thought, well, at least it's not a comedy. It must be okay. No, it's got a 22%. 
Okay, well, it's about a mom, and I believe her daughter dies, and uh, she's dealing with that kind of tragedy or whatever. And uh, so she's talking about that movie. And what's interesting is that the script was originally, I guess, written for a, a male actor. And the uh, guy interviewing her goes, well, I, you know, you, you're no stranger to flipping genders. As we all remember, you uh, flipped the gender in, uh, what do you call it, in Ghostbusters. So what do you have to say? And Melissa McCarthy, she still doesn't get it. She still doesn't get it. She doesn't understand why. And they call us man boys. She doesn't say it, but he says it, and she goes along with it. She says, I don't understand why these man boys are so mad. Uh, let's take a look. So the lead role in this one was actually gender flipped from the original script, from what I've heard. And, and Melissa, um, I'm guessing this one will get far less toxic uh, man boy reactions than your, your most famous gender flipping film in Ghostbusters. Toxic man boy reactions. Here's what you do if you're Melissa McCarthy. All right, here's what you do. You go, well, 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 hold on. I want to stop you right there. I think the people who were mad at my movie, I'm not going to call them man boys. I think that's unfair. These were some Ghostbusters fans who clearly, you know, had a different idea of what the series should be. And I, I feel bad that maybe we didn't deliver, you know, what the audience wanted. I mean, clearly the movie wasn't a hit. It had a lot of bad reviews, and I, I have to own up to that. So, uh, you know, and I hope the Ghostbusters franchise goes forward. That's how you say you don't let you don't let the interviewer give you. Ooh, what about those man boys? You stop him. You do the PR thing. You do a little bit of good PR. Try to you know win yourself back into the hearts and minds of the American movie going public. Melissa just runs with it. How do you look back at that? How film do you look back five on this years one, later Melissa? now with perspective? Do you, do you share many fans' viewpoints that it was underrated? There's no end to stories we can tell, and there's so many reboots and relaunches and different interpretations and. To say any of them are wrong, I just don't get it. <laughs> okay. That's such a bizarre state. I mean, this is the classic, if you don't have anything nice to say, why say anything at all? Because uh, that's movie criticism. That's uh, th Here's what people don't seem to understand, because I've been getting this a lot late lately, where they're like, why would, you, why would you say anything negative about Star Wars? Why would you say anything negative about Ghostbusters? You know, if you don't like it, why don't you just shut up and not like it? Okay, because critics exist for a reason. Like, yes, it's entertainment. It's entertaining now to watch, you know, movie reviews from guys like me and other guys in this space. But also, I mean, there, well, there's a couple different things. One is that it's a form of consumer critique. It's a consumer review. I'm telling you, listen, if you're going to go to the movie theater and you only got 10 bucks and you only afford to see one movie, don't make it this one. It's not worth your money. Or if you're going to sign up for a streaming service, you're going to buy it digital on demand. I'm telling you, no, it's really not worth your money. I do not recommend seeing it. It also has the function, though, of being like, you know, and stuff like me where I do movie analysis, stuff like Red Letter Media does, is that it breaks it down and hopefully creates a new generation of storytellers and comedians and whatever else who can go, okay, here's why this didn't work. You know, here's how you can make a better story. So it has value there. And it, yes, it does have value as it's funny to rip on bad movies. We've been doing it forever. Mystery Science Theater, uh, all sorts of different things. Riff tracks. Okay, you can we've been picking apart bad movies since the dawn of cinema. It's fun to do. So this idea of like, well, there's so many different ways to make a thing. So like, isn't it great that we just have more stories? No, not necessarily. If you make a bad one, like we're going to talk about it. All right, Melissa, what else you got here? I don't get the fight to, to see who can be the most negative and the most hateful. Everybody should be able to tell the story they want to tell. If you don't want to see it, you don't have to see it. This one was a wonderful switch. This is Ted's idea. Okay. So her ultimate story, the ultimate takeaway is if you don't like it, uh, shut up. Everybody, sh everybody should be allowed to tell the story they want to tell. Well, what, what are you talking about? First of all, no one stopped you from making Ghostbusters. You got to, you got to make it. We didn't stop you from making it, okay? But after you make it and it sucks, we should, we talk about it. Is that unreasonable? Why do, why would you not just go, yeah, I'm sorry that people didn't like it. I think there's some fair criticism. Maybe some guys went a little too far, but I think most people were fair in their criticism. I understand that people didn't like it. And I'm moving on to bigger and better things, including the Starling with 22% on tomato. I guess, I guess I'm not... Audience liked it. Well, maybe it's good then. Um, point is that not only, yeah, are we going to pick it apart, but this idea that, uh, you know, people should be able to create the stories they want to make. Well, that doesn't always happen. 
Okay, I got a lot of stories I'd like to make, but people are not giving me uh, giant movie budgets or the access to certain franchises. I can't tell a Ghostbusters story, not legally. Okay, they're not going to give me the rights to Ghostbusters anytime soon. So you, to tell me, well, everybody should be allowed to tell their own story. No, you were in a unique position to work with the actual Ghostbusters franchise, to have actual, you know, Bill Murray's in the movie for half a second. You got to work with some of the original Ghostbusters cast. Like, you made an official Ghostbusters product. And you can't tell me, well, it doesn't really matter because anybody can make a story. And I, no, I'm not. A, <laughs> we're not. We don't get to make Ghostbusters. You got to make Ghostbusters and you screwed it up. So just own up to it. Just own up to it. Don't look. If the interviewer tells you, what about all those man boys, all those man baby, whatever, you go, no, 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 no. You know, there's a lot of guys out there, you know, and they wanted a very, you know, they had ideas of what they wanted in Ghostbusters. We tried something new and it didn't exactly land with everybody. Uh, for the people who liked it, thank you very much. And for the people who didn't, you know, uh, I, I understand that it's not everything for everybody. But instead, we get into this weird nonsensical well anybody can make a story i don't understand why everybody's got to be hateful i don't know did some people go a little too far maybe you know the people who were maybe sending death threats or you know sending letters to your house about how much you suck fine that was too far but the majority you got to be real you got to focus on the majority of what was said and what was done and the majority of people you know they made reviews that yeah okay maybe made fun of you guys because you made a really unfunny ghostbusters movie and you really screwed it up I think you just got to take it on the chin. You got to let it go. If an interviewer brings, I know you didn't bring it up. She didn't bring it up to be fair, but if an interviewer brings it up, you should have a stock, polite, you know, nice little PR thing. Okay. And you should, you should admit, I don't know. You didn't make a great movie. It's not the end of the world. And again, to keep refocusing that back on the fans, the evil fans, the man boys, the man babies, it's just a bad look. It's a bad look. Doesn't make me want to watch the Starling. I'll tell you that right now. I'm not. I'm not excited to watch this movie about him. She's got a dead kid, and she's mad at a bird. I don't. I don't care. I have no time for this. I got no time for it, Melissa. Come on, shape up, be better, go make a funny movie for once. I know you can do it. I believe in you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments. Is Melissa is Melissa handling this correctly? I mean, should she even be holding on to any sort of resentment towards the people who didn't like Ghostbusters? Or is it time to just let it go? I feel like she should let it go. I mean, it feels like she's already moved on in her career. I don't even know why she allows these interviewers to, you know, if, she, if my interview, if an interviewer brought it up, I would tell him, no, 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 let's talk about another question. I don't want to talk about that. It's not relevant. I'm moving on, and all the Ghostbusters fans, they're going to get the movie they want. It's a perfect thing. Why let him bring the drama up again? Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. We got more cool videos coming soon. I love you guys. And uh, the Starling. <laughs> again, Netflix giving me more terrible Melissa McCarthy movies. Why am I subscribed to Netflix? I don't know. I really don't know.